Hello and welcome back. My name is Bertie and this is the WebGL 2D Game Engine Tutorial. Today's going to be a bit of a short one. What we're going to do is we're going to extend the functionality of our material class so that way we'll be able to create any kind of shader we want with any kind of parameters we want and we should be able to change those with the object in our JavaScript code. Last time we left off we had these sprite cropping here. We can see our little flame man has been cut out of his sprite sheet and he's animating and the same with this walker thing and it's also moving across the screen. We learnt a little bit about matrices and we also learnt a little bit about UVs and stuff. But today what we're going to do is we're actually going to go back to our materials class that we wrote in the first tutorial and we're going to improve that a little bit. How are we going to improve it? Remember back here whenever we first instantiated our sprite we loaded in some different attributes of our shader and we got their locations. So get attribute location A position and if we go back to our shader we can see that's refers to this attribute here. Um, so the problem is with this is that we have to hard code these. U frame, U object, that kind of stuff, U image. So whenever we set up a shader we also have to set up the individual attributes as part of our rendering class. So we're going to get around that. Instead we're going to pull that stuff out dynamically. And how are we going to do that? Well we start by writing a new function within, or sorry, a new method within inside our class materials. So gather parameters. And there you go, that's done, that's complete. Well let's move on. No, 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 let's seriously. Alright, the same sort of deal as we always do. We get our GL context like this. Um and then we want to go through we want to test let is uniform. It's gonna be a, let's see, it's gonna be zero and we're gonna test it for its falsy status. So zero will obviously be false. And then we also want to set a local variable, or, or sorry, a variable within inside of our class. We're called this that parameters. So we're going to store what parameters we find into this object here. Now, I'm going to use a wee bit of an ugly hack here. Is uniform is less than two. So we're going to actually increment the is uniform uh, variable. So it starts off as not, which will read as false. It's not uniform. And then it'll increment to one, and that'll uh, read as true. And then it'll increment as two, which will break us out of our loop, and we'll stop. We'll stop evaluating stuff after that. So then we need a for loop. So for let i equals zero, well i is less than count. This will be the count of our actual the number of variables inside of it. Uh, so while yes, okay. So let count equal and let's get g our, our get program parameters this we we'll put in our program this the program and then we have to put in our type so normally we do like gl active oops active uniform like this or you do gl active underscore attribute like this here. So it's either one or the other, it's never both. So because we're doing is uniform and we're going to start off with uh, that's being false, uh, then we're going to simply do a little test here. So let um, let parm type equal is uniform. So we're evaluating the truth status of is uniform. If it is the uniform, then use active uniform. Sorry, that should be active uniform, and if it's not using uniform we use gl active attributes and then whenever we first run uh, our first create our new material we'll want to run this this that gather parameters right at the start and invalid parameter name what we want to do after this is we want to do separate kind of We'll do a separate process for uniform. So is uniform. So we'll put that in there, and we'll break this into two. But there's a couple of variables I definitely want to have. So let details, uh, and then and let location. So we're gonna have these two variables here that we want to then push into our this dot parameters object, and the parameters object is gonna be. Well, let's just keep this commented out because this will be our actual assignment. 
And whenever we use a uniform, we're going to set details to equal gl get active uniform. Put in the program, this that program, and then i being the increment we're using. So we have a count. This will be a count of all the different parameters within our shader. And then as we increment them using i, we'll pull that back out using get active uniform. And then if I just do a console dot log details like this, we'll be able to hopefully see what's actually in that variable. And there you have it. That's our list of uniforms of inside our shaders. So we have U world, U object, U frame, U image, and then U world again as it evaluate two separate materials. So you can see here our details object that we get back for running this get active uniform is given us a name, a size, and a type. And the type there is going to refer to some OpenGL type. So if I type in webgl to rendering context dot float, you can see it'll give me back a number. U world will be a mat free, because that's what we set it. And there you go, you can see, yes indeed, that type mat free is free five six seven five. And that's exactly the type we have here, free five six seven five. So the two correspond. Okay, so now that I've done it with uniforms, we'll do the same oops, we'll do the same thing with uh attributes so instead of having uniforms here we use attrib make sure you spell it right um, we also want to set the location to uh, gl get attribute location in fact it's already there this dot program and then the name of our attribute which we can now get by using details dot name like this we do exactly the same thing for Uniform, except for instead of get attribute location, it's get uniform location. Oops. And we take that information, details dot name equals location. Which is going to equal location that we just pulled out of our shader. Uniform, is it a uniform? So we can use our is uniform variable and type. We're going to get details dot type. See, this is uniform. Remember before we were saying we were using a integer that we're incrementing and then using its falsy status? Well, now we actually do just want the boolean back. So what we can actually do is make it false false. So if it's not not is uniform, that means it's uniform, like a kind of weird double negative. And uh, what that guarantees, let me just show you that actually here in the console. So if I have the number one, and I want to make that one in a falsy test situation, one would be true. So if I do one and put two exclamation marks in front of it, that should give me back true. And likewise, if I put zero, it gives me zero, and then two exclamation marks and zero, it gives me false. There you go. All right, and if I run all this, uh, we tested for some syntax errors. We see we have one there, a little semicolon at the end we shouldn't have had. Um, it does indeed work. Uh, no errors. So sprite one dot uh, material dot, and we called it parameters. We check those out and we expand this. We can see yes, we have our A position, our A texture, U frame, U image, all the different variables inside of our shader. And we expand them out, we can see they have a type and a location, and whether they're uniform or not. And the ones we use are all uniform, so we can see that's true. Now the next step, we're going to have to set these values. So, now that we can pull them out, we can get rid of this, but if we delete this uh, set of um, variable references, we're still using those down in, our, uh, down in our render method. So that'll actually break it. So, we're going to actually have to set something to replace. Uh, these variables here and we're going to call it set and it's going to be a method within our material class so set like this and then we're going to go first thing we do uh, we're going to get the first parameter will be the name of the variable that we want to set then the rest is just going to be values a b c d e and they could be anything that's the point they're just like open variables that we can then use later uh, so if name is in and then this that parameter so we're actually first of all we're testing to make sure that whatever variable we're trying to set actually exists inside our shader 
And if it does, then we want to get that variable. So let uh, param equal this dot parameters, and then the name of our variable. And then we go if param uh, uniform. So if it's a type uniform, we do one thing with it, else we do another. Okay. So how do we actually set this variable? Well, we use the switch statement, switch, and we take in the parameters type. And if you're not familiar with a switch statement, think of it as just a large nested uh, if else statement where we evaluate the value of one uh, variable. In this case, we're using parameter type. So in if parameter type, we set up our first case. If parameter type is a value, let's see. Uh, oh, let's get our GL out. Uh, so let GL equal this dot GL. Uh, equals GL dot float. So if it equals GL float type, this type is of type GL float. We wanted to do the following. GL uniform, oops, form 1F. So we want to set the value like this. We give it, tell it which program to use. Or we tell it which location we want to use. Sorry, my bad. Uh, so we set that up here, location. So we just reference that. So param.location. And then we put in the value A. And then we break. And the break stops the switch statement from checking and evaluating the rest of the different statements. And then that's pretty much it. And we want to do that for every kind of variable. Well, every one that we'll be working with. So fact 2 is going to be the same thing, except for instead of inserting one value, we insert 2. Uh, and we also want to use a, a 2 there, a uniform 2 float, uniform 3 float. And, you know, you're getting the idea where we're going with these. Uh, a, B, and then C. A, B, C, and D for 4. Uh, type vec4. Like this. And then we want to set up one to work with matrices as well. So instead of vec4, we're going to have mat3. And then for the values of that, we're just going to do false and then A. Because A will be some sort of matrix we're passing in. And then we'll do the same thing for a matrix, 4x4 four four matrix instead. Oh, I need to change this too. So instead of uniform 4 float like that, I'm going to do uniform matrix 3 F V like this instead. And then copy and paste that there. Instead of times 3, it's times 4. I think that's, I believe that's right. And then for the last one, we'll do a sampler underscore 2d and that will just be a uniform float i like this and we'll get rid of the false okay that's pretty much all we need to do for uh for uniforms but we'll want to do something as well for attributes too so as i said in the first episode attributes and uniforms uniforms tend to be more just discrete variables for a shader but attributes tend to be a large array that uh that then gets broken up into each vertex shader. So that's handled a little differently. And we'll set up another switch statement again and put param oops, I'm so sorry. Param dot type as our input value. Case GL float like this. GL and then vertex type attribute pointer put in our location the same way as we did with our uniform variables uh, and since it's type float we want this to be a one because uh, float only has one value in the array representing it and then we push in the other values that we bring in a b c and d and then we break and in case you're unfamiliar with these A, B, C, D values are, I will just set up some default values and talk our way through what each one means. So if A is undefined, we want to give it some v default default value. So A equals GL float. So A, in this case, this parameter here after the one, refers to um, the type of variable. So in this case, it's a type float. And then we go if B is undefined. 
then b is of type false b is a kind of normalization it'll uh, flatten out the values to between one and minus one so the value two will become one and then the value minus two will become minus one that kind of thing which we don't really want to do by default anyway we'll risk our way through this and move on to hooking this stuff up oops uh -huh. may I spot it at home that I put this in the wrong place I accidentally put those uh, default values inside my switch statement which is a horrible syntax error but I picked it up this time before I actually tried to run it so good for me uh, okay and then we want to do the same thing with like probably all the way up to four uh, variables so one two three four so float one float vec two float vec three and float vec four all right so I think this is pretty much ready uh, we just need to start replacing some of our sprite rendering functions with that with this new uh, set function so let's go down and have a look at that right now so you can see now in the rendering function we do things like a, a text coordinate where we set attribute this is the stuff we just rewrote inside of our material class so we want rid of this but let's first of all get rid of um, the stuff here where we're actually fetching the uh, locations of these attributes inside of our sprite so this should break everything yes it does indeed and uh, so now we need to replace it with this dot material the shape the sprites material dot set and the name of our variable is and for the first one here we're replacing is u image just like that and the value we're putting in is zero okay that's first of many and we also want to do the same thing well we get rid of this for start and we want to put in this dot set a underscore texture coordinate and we don't really want to give it any values, we just literally want to set it. We we'll do the same thing here for except for now it's A position values. If I could type. And we'll get rid of this. Let me delete this. And then down here we're setting three uniforms. So the first one is something called U frame. So and then the second one is called U world. And then the third one is U object. And we set the first one's values to frame X, frame Y. You can see that's what we had here, so we can delete this now. And the second one, we set the value to this. And then for the third one, we copy the same value from this one. All right, I think that's it. We run that and let's see how it goes. Oh, I have to delete this first. And now we refresh it and we can see, yes, everything seems to be working just as we expected it. Uh, with all these commented out, now we don't need to actually ask specifically for which variables we need. It'll pull them out automatically. And then we just use this dot, this material set, the name of our variable and then some parameters to actually set the variables so that makes things a lot cleaner and a lot nicer for us moving forward so I'm gonna make this a bit of a short one and wrap it up there and next time I think we're gonna have a look at rendering different contexts and cleaning up our sprite class a little bit alright well thanks for tuning in I know this was a short one but I figured an hour long tutorials each time I think that might be a little bit difficult to chew through all at once so I'm gonna split them up a little bit and uh, hopefully that way it'll be a little bit easier to follow along at home. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Goodbye.